Good morning. Good morning. There is a lot going on today. We even cut some stuff out, but there is a lot going on today. We have a baptism of Ruth Joy. We have Pentecost celebration. We have boom whackers going on. Um, sometimes it's communion, but we're going to wait till the first Sunday of the month to do communion. Um, lots of things going on. We have lots of friends and family who have gathered for this wonderful day. And then we've got Moral Day celebration on top. So we'll have a four-hour service today, so feel free to leave and come back for intermission. No, I'll try to keep it to about an hour, hour and 15. So we have uh, quite a few celebrations uh, coming up with baptism. Um, a couple of things to look forward to. We have our Thoughtful Christian that is uh, continuing their book, Just Faith, uh, reclaiming the progressive uh, Christianity. We have our car show going on at the park that Bruce is in charge of, so stop by and see Bruce McGregor down there. Uh, coming up at the end of June, our last Saturday in June, we'll have Pride in the Park. Uh, the church is uh, sponsoring that along with uh, United University Presbyterian and Abiding Presence. And then the following Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, we'll have Pride Worship also with uh, Abiding Presence and U University Presbyterian. Um, so we invite you to come out to the park on Saturday and Sunday of the last Sunday and Saturday and Sunday of the month. Also, Abby and Lisa will be delegates that will be leaving towards the end of the month to go serve at General Synod. And you'll hear more about that in ways this church can impact and do a little project to support, um, especially women across the United Church of Christ and across the world. So that will get go out next week. Barbara. I'm Barbara McGregor. I'm the clerk of the church. The members of First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Rochester, are called to a congregational meeting on Sunday, June 11. At approximately 11.15 in the morning, immediately following worship. The purpose of the meeting is to review the budget for the second half of the year. And if you need a video link, uh, let us know in the church office. It is on June 11th, we have our music Sunday, so all our musical groups will be performing. Um, usually Sundays in um, the summertime are a little bit different, as it's our, our off time of the year, but we have some wonderful uh, gifts and music coming up, so if you would like to be part of that, um, doing a solo or have your own group, um, please sign up um, or talk with Lisa, um, who's helping coordinate that. But June 11th is something to look forward to with all the gifts of music this church has. So I invite Jamie to come on up for our call to worship. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. Today, followers of the way gathered in many places from Jerusalem to Galilee, from Sydney to Port-au-Prince, from Rome to Arabia, from Dallas to Chicago, God's spirit still blows like a mighty wind, breathing new life into the sails of our canoes. God's spirit still burns like tongues of flame. Dancing over our heads, we can see that God's spirit is with us. God's spirit still flows like currents of living water, connecting hearts and islands of all believers. Praise God. Yes, we will praise God. Let us worship God from whom all life's blessings prayer. O Holy Spirit, come and blow through this gathering space as mighty wind as you did with the apostles at the beginning of the church. Pour your spirit upon us all, on all ages, all genders, all races and people, to speak your words, see your vision, dream your dreams toward your great and glorious day. May your Holy Spirit flow like rivers of living water from the hearts of believers through the songs of praise, words of worship, and prayers of devotion. Amen. Today's first reading is from John chapter 7. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now, he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Our second reading is from Acts chapter 2. 
When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at the sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Before we get started in your bulletin, it does say, Come Thou Font, we are actually doing two songs this morning. The first one you will recognize, and this is dedicated to Pastor Scott. So, do you know what today is? What's today? Do you know? Do you know what today is, James? It is birthday, yeah. That's a nice answer, yeah. It's also Pentecost. Do you know what Pentecost is? 
No. It's a day of streamers, right? Is that what it's about? No, I don't, I don't think they had streamers a long time ago. They have streamers, so I'm going to pass out some streamers. And while I'm, you want to take one and pass one? Oops. Take pass one. Oh, now you want to come up, huh? All right. Yep, can you help? All right, so I'm going to just rip them off while I'm talking. So today is Pentecost. It's the day of celebration, so I'm going to keep on changing it up. So Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit came down like tongues of fire. So we're not going to play with fire, right? That's not fun. But so that it, the Spirit came down, it was above them like tongues of fire. So these are going to be our, our fire. So we have different color flames here, and we're going to wave it around, and people in the audience will probably get jealous because they don't have these. Um, yeah, it's the color fire. Anyone else need one? You get one, right? And Ruthie might get one later. So, on Pentecost, besides being fire, right? I have, I have matches, but they're not going to show up very well, so I'm, I won't do that. So you'll have a chance at the end of our children's moment to wave it around. You can see the mix of colors going on. And what's really cool about today is, yes, we're doing baptism. But we have people from Ann Arbor area, Michigan. We have some family from Wisconsin over here. We have family from Illinois. We have the winters have come down from, or come up from Ohio. We have people from all across Michigan, friends and family members of this church to celebrate this day. So in the story of Pentecost, people from all over the world were able to talk in the same language, even though they came from different countries. Yeah, you could talk too, right? So as part of that, I want you to wave your streamers above your head, and you can see a mix of colors of God's word and God's spirit moving through the people. And God reminded us that we are all united. Yeah, we have some pink back there. All right, you can put your flames or tongues of fire down for a second. So, part of that is being creative. So, the spirit of God gives us different ways to be creative. So, I've got some pictures that say, filled with the Holy Spirit. So, it's a blank blank page, right? That's, what's fun about the blank page? Color. Coloring it in, yes. Uh. So if you want one of these, I'll have uh, Naomi help me pass them out as well. I've got this, and I've got a children's bulletin too that goes on. Uh. So fill it in with whatever color you want. This is a reminder of God's how spirit. About, how about what? How, how about? one? Yep. How about if you? Oops, sorry. If you hug somebody, yeah, that will come later on. All right, so let us pray as we go, and I'll give you this to you as we go. He you guys repeat after me? Holy Spirit, move through us with your love. Connect our hearts and help us to serve each other. Let us show Jesus' love, his compassion and joy with all people we meet. Amen. 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 So you have some time. You're going to be coming up maybe later on to see this baptismal water. And then, uh, oh, you guys want to take one and pass one? And then you guys can go back to your seats. All right? And fill in those colors. All right, so take your...
invite Ruth Joy Cunningham up here, and I'll invite our godparents in one moment. So the reason I want to bring Ruth Joy or Ruthie up first is, as many of you know, this is Kristen Ray's daughter, Ruth Joy. But Ruth Joy has some special things going on today. So her dress is part of her of Kristen's wedding dress. So right here, Kristen made this. I did not. If you know anything about me, I almost failed uh, home economic sewing, so I did not do that. I offered my, my skills. He did offer to help. But <laughs> this is part of Kristen's wedding dress um, that her grandmother, Ruth, who she's named after, um, and then also her middle name, Joy, is named after my grandmother, Joyce. So legacy and power in names is through all these things. So, all right, you got to behave, right? Yeah, but she's a pastor's kid. So I invite you to turn to your bulletin insert on the sacrament of baptism. You'll all be playing a part in just a moment. The sacrament of baptism is an outward sign of an inward grace. It is both God's gift and our response to that gift. We believe that baptism as a sacrament places each one of us into the body of Christ, the church and the sacrament that is big enough, strong enough and cleansing enough to last forever. God's love for us has no beginning and no end. Parents overflowing with love for their child or children act on their faith by bringing their precious little ones to be baptized. They acknowledge that to raise children into a life of faith takes part of a whole community or a church like this one, and like the future ones in which they may be part of. Then when children reach the age of discernment, we prepare and give them an opportunity to make their own commitment to faith, confirmation, at which time young people confirm the miracle that baptism has already begun. This growth and discernment should continue so that the journey of faith becomes a lifelong journey, and a baptism is a sacred milestone on it. Hear these words, the scriptural, scriptural foundation of the sacrament. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus also said, let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter. Then he took the children in his arms, and he put his hands on them and blessed them. I want to give a little shout out to all the friends and family who have gathered here, of all the people who could be part of this special day in the sacrament of Ruthie's baptism. For our godparents, Tom and Shay, my, one of my sisters, the middle child of twins, and my brother-in-law, Tom, I will give you a heads up to come up as we read the affirmation of the UCC together. So on this occasion of Ruth's baptism, when little ones are marked with the water of God's abiding love, let us, the family of God, affirm our beliefs by sharing together the UCC Statement of Faith, which is also found in your bulletin, so please rise for that. And Shane, Tom, come forward, please. So we believe in you, O oh God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God. And to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your image, and set before each one ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to and shared our common lot conquering sin and death and reconciling yourself. You bestow upon your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faith. Proclaim the gospel of the people and resist the powers of evil to share in Christ's baptism, eat at his table, and join in the passion and victory. 
sin, the fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence. Blessings and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. Please be seated. Speaking in tongues already. <clears throat> so we've come to the part where we make our promises. And as a calling as a pastor, it's one of the great privileges and honors to baptize my own child. We had talked to uh, a friend, a mentor to me, about uh, being here with Pentecost and doing his own church and just timing and all that. I got to fulfill my special role, so it is a blessing for me. So now I speak to myself and to Kristen and all of you. And now I ask you, our parents, myself included, our family, our sponsors, is it your desire that Ruth be baptized into this faith as we have just promised. If so, please answer, it is. It is. Do you promise with God's help, by your example and my example, and teaching to provide a Christian environment for Ruth and to bring her up in the worship and teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Do you promise to guide and lead her in the confession of Jesus Christ as her Savior, to confirmation and to the responsibility of membership in Christ Church? and to communion at the Lord's table? If so, answer, we do. We do. So members and friends, now it's your part to take place. So members and friends of First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, we are called to make disciples and to offer the gift of grace in baptism. So you are witnesses and celebrate Ruth's baptism. Do you promise your love, support, and care for her, for her family, to live and, and to, as they live and grow in Christ? If so, answer, we promise with the help of God. We promise with the help of God. And so we will bless the water as it is to be holy water. And I invite you as I'll be with blessings, but if you want to throw up a hand to join me in that process. So, one moment. So if you want to put a hand up now, you are welcome to do that as we bless this water. Gracious God, bless this water by your Holy Spirit, saving those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have no power over them, creating new life in those baptized this day, that they may one day rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and all, shall always be, world without end. Amen. So, daughter of mine, yeah. <laughs> are you going to be like a true pastor's kid and be full of surprises? All right? I know. She doesn't like bath time. She's more of a shower person. I know. I know, baby. Yeah. Ruth, Joy, Cunningham, always remember that at this moment, even though you are crying, and every moment that you on this life are a precious child of God, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May God, the loving parents, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and preserve you all the days of your life that you in this life can live many more moments. And in the world to come, you may have life everlasting. Amen. Was that so bad? Was that so bad? I am hungry. She doesn't like the marshmallow we call that. It's the pastoral marshmallow. She doesn't like that. I invite you to join with us as we give thanks in prayer. We give thanks, O holy God, for this precious child and for your grace present here today in water and in spirit. May we all be filled with joy as Ruth is received and nurtured into the body of Christ. Through your Holy Spirit, grant this family, strengthen your life's journey, courage in times of suffering, the joy of faith, the freedom of love, and the joy of new life. Amen. 
But part of it, what you'll be getting is a little booklet of how you can uh, nurture and grow and support Ruthie or Ruth, especially when you're across Lake Michigan. I know you can do amazing things. Um, but you'll also receive one of our roses. Tom, I won't make you wear it as a boutonniere, but... Put it in my ear. Yes, put it in your ear. And then, then Ruthie or Chris and I will keep the other one. So at this time, you are invited to go back to your seat for Ruthie. She will have this, um, have this special certificate of baptism as well as a, uh, a book from the United Church of Christ about baptism. And if you haven't seen these before, they're really, really interesting. So Kristen or a member of the family might be going around taking your picture. So if you don't want to be part of that, you're not, you can kind of put your hand up. Um, but it tells about, for the child, it shows a picture of the church, people who have gathered there, friends, family. It shows the minister, but she sees the minister every day. So I don't know if she wants to see that. Um, and then she'll get this chalice, which has some of the holy water in it. So, wonderful things to be part of the sacrament of baptism. Sure. <clears throat> so, this is the day that the Spirit has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A day filled with tongues of fire, of people communicating as one, speaking in one language. A day of lifting up the joys of the church, of sharing what we have in common, not what, what divides us. This is a day when we... Allow the Spirit to be our guide, to take great courage. So on this day of great courage, I'll share with some of those moments in my life that have had great courage, in no particular order. So in my own life, I was quite shy and reserved. So as a, a lifelong thing, my mom always reminds me, how did you become a minister? In a, in a good way, not in a bad way, but in a good way, as being a shy, reserved person who didn't want to come up for children's moments, didn't want to go to Sunday school at all, who wanted to become an otter trainer, as I've told you before, or a police officer. But what I've realized in my young life so far, 37 I'm today, is that I knew that I was well enough that I knew God's plans, and still I ran away. For anyone who knows the character of Jonah, that was me. I knew this spiritual call to be a pastor, and still I ignored it. I kind of put it off to the, the wayside of seeing what other plans that God might have for me. I remember being on mission trips of doing a jumper off rock in West Virginia, of jumping 10 or 12 feet into the water, of being afraid of heights at the time. I remember going zip lining and taking youth on mission trips and going with Kristen when we uh, took Chicago uh, youth and young adults to Haiti. Kristen had been there alone numerous times that I came with her to build uh, rain, rain barrel purification systems and solar systems and help complete an orphanage. I've gone on many mission trips across the United States and across the Caribbean by doing it alone or with my sister Shay, who came on two of the mission trips. But I always knew that God was with me. I've taken part in river rafting trips and going to new places like Oak Harbor, Ohio, when I grew up in the suburbs, of moving from Elmhurst, Illinois, a city of 65,000, to Oak Harbor on a good day of 3,000, of then moving back to this place here in Rochester, which has celebrated 196 years of ministry, and knowing that many pastors, both young and old, had gone before me, and trusting in the Spirit to take courage and to be my guide. When we talk about being courageous, of following the spirit of our guide, we know that times will be scary, that sometimes the world seems dark or seems full of pessimism. But we know that this is our story, that we know that we can trust God to fulfill the love and hope that is inside us. We know that there is much division in the world, that there is much community that has been frayed, or sometimes when people hear church, they say, that's not for me. I know the church has been a place of bile bashing and hurt, but not this church, not the churches that I've served, but the disciples in which we look to this day were full of much courage. Last week in the church, we celebrate Ascension Sunday when Jesus rose and finally left the disciples, and now the church is theirs to take and grow and be brave and courageous. In our world this day, we 
hear of mass shootings that happen more and more than days in the year. We hear of rising inflation and a, a debt ceiling that hasn't been worked out. We know that there are people that are hungry and thirsty. We know that there are natural disasters that happen. And guess what? That's our part to make the story better. That's our start to trust the Spirit of God to make every place under the sun part of this beloved community. For those who don't know this idea of the beloved community, it's to treat others as equal as we do at the communion table. To see people who are different than you, whether politically or different uh, areas of wealth or poverty, whether having plenty or in want, this place around Christ's table is what we have as our Kickstarter, our catalyst, from a place to remind us of the beloved community, where all of us bear the image of a loving God, and it's us to proclaim that. No matter where we are, no matter where we go, that's the beloved community of God, where we are all together as one. This is the only way that the world isn't going to get any better. If you have problems in your own community, trust the Spirit. But remind others that they are part of God's Holy Spirit too. And remind them of the beloved community that Jesus lived and made ministry part of and then died for, which the disciples took great courage to follow the Spirit. So when we listen to the Spirit's guide about being courageous, we know that this Sunday, this weekend, is all about Memorial Weekend. So I would be wrong if I didn't list the many wonderful people who sacrificed their love, their commitment to our country to make this weekend possible to live in this world and this nation of safety and security, to lay down their lives for those who they might not know, for their own loved ones, and for the love of a country and this idea of equality, justice, and the pursuit of happiness. It takes bold love and courage to lay down one's life, yet alone to risk their life for the sake of others. So we will take a moment during our pastoral prayer to lift that up. But now this is your time. When we leave here, it is your part to let the Spirit be your guide. In small ways and big ways, you are part of the beloved community. And so we extend out as the image of God in the beloved community to be one with each other. So take, take courage and let the Spirit be your guide. May it be so. Amen. So, as we talk about the Spirit being our guide, I invite you to rise in, in spirit and body if you are able and to sing this song that I hope you all know, you should, um, every time I feel the Spirit, about the Spirit moving through our midst. So please rise and spirit our body or feel free to be seated. <coughs>
please be seated as we will join together in our joy and concerns. Our ushers will come around with a microphone, so if you want to raise your hand, uh, we will bring it to you. We bought our house. You got your house. Congratulations. <laughs> Blessings for new houses become a home as you make it. Yeah, praise uh, Helen comes back from California to, uh, to today and uh, hope she's feeling better, has a bad throat and cold. Prayers of healing for Helen and a safe journey for Helen and others who are traveling back home or traveling on this busy Memorial Day weekend. This week, Brad is celebrating his 88th birthday on Tuesday. Prayers of happy birthday to Brad as he celebrates this milestone of wisdom and joy. Celebrating baby Ruth. Celebrating baby Ruth, your cousin, right? Yeah. Um, blessing of my grandma Flo. Blessing of Grandma Flo, our Grandma Flo, our extended grandma, uh, passed away a little bit ago. So we. Yeah, and that was Maya. <laughs> that's that's Ellie. So we have Elise, Maya, uh, Emma, Tommy, Owen is the oldest. So there's the the cousins over here. <laughs> so, what other prayers do we have to share? Prayers for Kristen as she goes back to work. And yeah. prayers for Pastor Scott as he keeps Ruthie. <laughs> I've got my backup. I've got my mom here too. And my dad. <laughs> so prayers to all the teacher. Prayers to Kristen as she goes back for finals. And prayers for my sanity. And sleep. Prayers for all those who died in wars. And prayers for peace in Europe and, and in the world. Prayers for peace in Europe and across the world, and prayers for the families who are missing loved ones who lay down their lives for our joy, our security, and our pursuit of happiness. I don't know if this counts, but this is my first time going to church for like, in like three years, and I'm going by myself. Well, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you had the courage to come and may the spirit guide. We're welcome and glad to have you here. Prayers for peace and courage for college students that have graduated, for those that are transitioning to summer jobs, and for families to support them in their process. For the many transitions in our lives, for our graduates from college and high school and other degrees, for all families to be together as one. So I want to lift up the wonderful prayers of Thanksgiving, the prayers of support for this church, for uh, University of Presbyterian, for abiding presence, for um, all those hands and volunteers that made uh, Pride Prom a possibility last Saturday, and for the work that is in process for Pride in the Park and for Pride Worship at the end of this month. Thank you for the ability to have our first Pride Prom in Rochester for all our youth and young adults. Um, it's really a special place to be the beloved community of God and to be the church. Is there anyone else? Well, let's take this time to send ourselves to breathe in God's spirit, to take a moment of silence. And I'll list our prayers and invite you to join with me in our Lord's Prayer. So let's take a moment to be centered and be one with each other as the spirit of God surrounds us. Gracious God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for all those who have given their lives in the service to our nation. When the greatest was needed, they stepped forward and they did their duty to defend the freedoms that we enjoy and to win the same for others. O oh God, you yourself have taught us that we win some for others, we lay down our lives for joy for equality, for a better future. We learn from your word that there is no greater love than one who lays down their life for another. These precious things that we honor those who sacrificed all they had, life itself for the loved ones and neighbors, their comrades and country, for all of us and for those that they wish for a better future. 
Help us to properly honor their legacy, their memory, and to support their family and friends that they have left behind by ensuring that their wounded comrades are properly cared for, by being watchful of their caretakers of the freedoms in which they gave their lives for, and by demanding that no person follow them to the soldier's grave unless the reason is worthy, even the price itself is costly. So Holy One, help us to remember that freedom is not free, that there are times when its cost is indeed dear, Nevertheless, forget those who paid so terrible a price to ensure that freedom would have a legacy. Though their names may be faded with the passing of generations, may we never forget that what they have done and help us to be worthy of their sacrifice, O God. Help us to be worthy disciples. Help us to lift up in this time the celebrations, the doubts, the cares that we have as we ask for prayers of peace for Ukraine through Europe, throughout the world. As we ask for peace to be in our nation, that we learn war and violence no more, and that mass shootings and senseless death may end. We lift up and praise those who are traveling this day and on this weekend that they can have safe journeys to be reunited or be home again. For the celebration of having their new home to make it a special place full of warm memories. We lift up the celebrations of this day that, God, you are part of, of baptisms, of family and friends to be together, of birthdays that are meaningful when shared together with family and friends. God, we give you thanks for those who are coming to church again for the first time. They may feel your warm embrace with this people, that they may know that you are here in this space, that this church seeks to be a beloved community here in this place and out into the world. So God, may your spirit rest freshly upon us and be a catalyst for us to take what we hear and experience here and take it out into the world to make our space a place of reality, of love, of a beloved community where all are created and cared for in your loving image. So as our part, as the spirit's call, be joining together with the Lord's prayer, whatever version you are comfortable with, as we share together as disciples and agents of change. Father, creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we are not in but to the rest of the world. So as part of our Pentecost, baptism, birthday, boom whackers, not communion, that's next weekend, we offer all the wonderful things that God is doing and the Spirit's call has us to do. So in your bulletin, as part of the United Church of Christ, we are part of wonderful gifts of supporting our association, our conference, Michigan Conference, in the United Church of Christ. And as the Spirit's call remind us that you'll see in your little uh, bulletin insert that this is holy ground, that God's Spirit is still here. So as we seek with other denominations to be a multiracial, multicultural, accessible all church, it takes all of us to be part of that. So whether your prayers or you have um, gifts to share with each other, this is the time to do that as we give our morning offering. So our ushers will come forward for our morning offering at this time.
with me as we dedicate our gifts. God of infinite possibilities, even as the first believers did in the early church, we offer our gifts for the use of your church. May these gifts support the ministry of our congregation, as well as strengthen the United Church of Christ. Give our leaders gifts of discernment for the possible use of these resources, which we dedicate this day's day. Blessings and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. I invite you to join us in our fellowship hall as we celebrate with a quite large portions of a meal for Ruthie's baptism to join a time of fellowship. There's no donuts, but there's Papa Joe's. So would you please join us for that? And I told you, sir, it's going to go out with a bang, so I'll turn my microphone off in a second. Right? This is, so if, you, if it's your first time or you're coming back, this is not the usual. We have fun, but a Holy Humor Sunday, it's a little bit different. So, and on Pentecost. So as you go, receive this benediction. May you love God so much that you love nothing else too much. And may you fear God enough that you fear nothing else at all. Now, may the Spirit's call be your guide, going out in service and love, making the beloved community reality through you, through your actions, your words, and through your, the meditations of your heart. Go in peace and love this day and always. Amen.